Vaticana. Buenos días or buenas tardes. My name is Darlene Santa Cruz and this digital storytelling is about my verano in Mexico and I've titled it Funds of Knowledge Knows No Borders. During the school year, I'm usually busy with academia, doing community work, or taking care of my children. I was looking forward to this summer to spend some time with my children after having a few life changes and being able to travel with my two good friends, Anita and Jennifer. After this mapping out activity, I'm inspired by everything that I've discovered and I want to see and document more. I asked Angeles if she'll take me on another walk throughout the community so that I can continue documenting these community literacies and resources. This time, Angeles takes me to the Huerta. It is there that I realize what a blessing it is to have Angeles, not only because she's a community member of Cajones, but because she serves as a community broker between Resplandor and Cajones. As we're walking through the huerta, I'm pleasantly surprised to see an adobe maker at work. Throughout the walk, I take dozens of pictures of native trees and fruit trees, vegetation that attracts wildlife, and medicinal plants that grow in this region. I was excited to talk about medicinal plants and Mexican traditional medicine with Angeles. In the region of Cajones, there are hundreds of medicinal plants, but I want to highlight these three. On the top left corner, we have la hierba del negro, that in Olympia has been used to cure the mal de aire or mal de ojo. The, uh, the hot wet leaves are also used for joint pains. The branches can be used to make a tea for stomach pains and cramps. The ruda, which is right underneath it on the left corner, is used in a tea, can be taken to stimulate late menstruation and ear molestation. The leaves can also be dried and whirled with rolling paper and smoked into into the ear to relieve earaches. And then on the right, we have calendula, and it, in a tincture form, it's used to disinfect and calm small wounds and burns. The flower, the leaves of the flower, can also be used as a fever reducer and to alleviate sore throat or muscular cramps. As my excitement begins to grow as a result of the landscape in Cajones, I put on my Tierra Libertad hat, or TYLO, a social justice collective in Tucson that I'm a part of, based out of Wakefield neighborhood. We work on various things, but some of them are barrio sustainability, creating green spaces through food production. We work with migrant rights as a community literacy, and we have a freedom school, which is a youth empowerment training by and for youth. Our slogan is Nuestra Cultura Defiende la Tierra, which means our culture defends, protects the land, the earth. And we have the maíz, symbolic of our culture, but also the ants, demonstrating that collective work that needs to take place if any social change is going to happen. In this recorrido through the huerta, Angeles and I talk endlessly about plants and how beautiful it is to feel connected to our environment. Here we are in front of the huerta where maíz is being grown and the men are piscando the cilantro. The smell of cilantro intoxicates our thoughts and I look at Angeles with enthusiasm and stutter. Uh, que si empezamos una huerta en resplandor?
Angeles, a step ahead of me, is already saying that that's what she's always wanted to do, to share with the kids and the jóvenes from the community. We take one more walk of cajones, but this time up El Cerro del Sombrero. We catch a breath of fresh air and a calming view of cajones. In this walk, we see so much and learn so much, but I wanted to highlight some of these things. In El Cerro, you see many petroglyphs like this one, whether they're spirals, and we wondered about if they represented cycles or sort of calendar for the antepasados of this place. And then we also found Mayan offerings and some of these petroglyphs that are put out there during the rain season. And then here on the bottom right corner is one of our favorite cactus, the garambuya. We were addicted to the fruit throughout this entire walk and we kept picking them as a way to keep our energy up. At this point, we put together a proposal to Dr. Fletcher about the Huerta Resplandor. With his help, we designated a location for the Resplandor Community Garden. Right away, we get to work with the Resplandor volunteers and the youth who help clean out the area. Angeles, Juliana, and myself start the process of gathering some native trees and fruit trees, shrubs, medicinal plants for this exciting project. During these walks, Juliana and I are always amazed of how Angeles will catch a glimpse of a medicinal plant hidden behind a bunch of weeds. As this huerta continues to take shape, we created a rough drawing of what the huerta could look like. I am concerned that now I have to leave, but I'm excited to have others take ownership of the Resplandor Huerta. This has been one of the most rewarding journeys that was sparked from a class assignment that allowed me to contextualize the work in Resplandor and Cajones, but also to bring in the funds of knowledge of both the community and myself and apply it within a different context and in a different place. And with that, I'm thankful for the help and support for making this a reality and I leave you with this quote from one of my favorite indigenous educators Greg Cajete who says our students can expand their awareness of the environment of th and of themselves as creative beings who are part of a greater story of creation greater than anything that they can imagine thank you <laughs>